dash and splash, backsplash. Well, I stopped one video to start another one. There, there's the plan. See you guys later. You know, instead of just diving into it, I decided I was gonna kind of do a step-by-step -step of what I've been doing to kind of get to here and why I'm doing it. So the primary reason is it's just a nicer, cleaner radiator. It'll look better in there. It gives me all this much more room for activities. Like it's kind of hard to tell on the wide angle, but the old radiator set like here, and there was just not that much room, especially with the giant fans, but these slim fans, the tucked radiator, it's gonna be a life changer. So you have the power steering and coolers here in front, which I kind of bent up a little bit so I can clear the fan. I actually had the fan mounted just messing around with it. I think that's gonna look sick. Thumbnail. It's a pretty easy swap. So this is from a VW Sirocco, Sirocco, whatever. I can't remember how to pronounce those things. Sirocco is what I'm gonna call it. But uh, yeah, a lot of guys use these for tuck radiators. There's just two easy peasy inch and a half outs, or let's just say one lower and one upper. So the good thing is the lower radiator hose from the D-Series will go right there perfectly. The upper, you can kind of, you can obviously, you can fish it in there if you wanted to, but. So the challenge with this one is there is no filler neck. There's no anywhere to put fluid in. So you have to come up with a solution. So an inline filler neck is what most people use. And there's a couple of different ways I can think about mounting this. I'd like to get it kinda right here. Goal you have to have is your filler neck has to be the highest point on this whole system. A lot of people will run like a, an auxiliary, like overflow tank. Uh, you can do that as well. It's actually probably a better system. But for right now, until I get a better system, I'm gonna run this. So that's why I did the whole battery relocation in the last video you saw. And if you didn't watch that, go watch it. Mm. Uh, another thing is I may, somewhere in the process, move my overflow reservoir over this region here somewhere, or I may go to the junkyard and see if I can't find one that'll actually fit over here and I can mount it up somewhere by the way. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and attach the lower radiator hose and uh, disconnect this upper one from the thermostat housing and kind of see what we have to work with. I've got a couple different hoses here. I ran to the parts store. The thermostat cooling line actually goes to the bottom. So what I need to do is the, uh, the neck that comes out of the top of the, the head there goes here. So instead of this pipe, I need something, I don't know, I'm gonna reconfigure my thought process there. I still have a bunch of extra hose just in case, so we'll see if that works. Shit. All right, so I got the uh, radiator back out and I kind of have a thing, a theory here. If I push this up, put it about, about here with this flex hose, it's got enough rigidity that it'll hold it up and it will be the highest point. If not, I may be able to build some brackets to kind of hold it here in place. I don't know, it's kind of an option. But I think everything else will go good. What I gotta do now is I gotta open up this hole a little bit and I'm actually gonna drill a hole here to actually act as a mount and then I can actually use some bolt holes up here to mount the top of it. Now what I have are these little filler things. I don't remember how long I've had them or where in the world I found them. They're like a hard neoprene, no. They should be good for an isolator. So what I'll end up doing is I'll hole saw, drop these in, put a hole in there so the bottom feet to the radiator. So these bottom feet will actually pop down in there and it'll act like a stabilizer slash vibration suppressant. Yeah, they'll go about there, about right there. And I actually kind of went through and massaged this, this bracketry or this little frame here of this little core support kind of area to kind of open up enough room so I can pull the radiator up and over a little bit, just kind of clear up some space there because we need some space. So I needed a, uh, a new bracket to mount the actual radiator. So I got El Chapo here and I just kind of carved out my piece of this turkey. And look at this result, seat and fabrication all the way, all day. Look at it, the most beautiful bracket you've ever seen. So I am gonna go just drag out these sharp edges, that way I don't murder myself if I try to reach in there, but it's not going anywhere. I'm gonna put a piece of rubber in here because I just contacted the metal a little bit. 
over here. I'll also throw a little like piece of radiator hose or something just to keep the vibrations down. But I've got these cups down here for kind of a vibration. I've got part of a uh, 5 8 heater hose wrapped around that one and acting as an isolator. But I think with just that one bracket, it's not going to go anywhere. If it ever has any rattles or acts like it's got a rub spot on it, then I'll fix it then. But that seat and fabrication bracket right there, that's money. So with jobs like this, there's a lot of tinkering, a lot of, yeah, let's figure out that, let's try this, let's try that. Well, let me get you guys caught up on where I is. Was overthinking this and trying to set this over here somewhere, but I just looked at it and I was like, I wonder if I just shorten that up. So I just put a little piece here, and this is actually, with it on the ramp, it's, it's hard to see, but that actually is the highest point right now. I may flip this around, I'm trying to decide. But for now, that's just how it's gonna stay. Uh, a couple more things. I got to looking at it and I started thinking, I made this seat and fab bracket, and I was looking at it, I was like, yeah, that should be fine. And I thought about it, you know, this is gonna vibrate, it's gonna run, it's gonna drive a lot. And all that vibration on one weld, especially an aluminum weld, and being that 90 degree, there's gonna be a lot of, a lot of pull on that spot right there. So what I went ahead and did, is made another bracket up in here. Another fine washer stack, of course. And I went ahead and just made another bracket. That way it's, it's the forces are across the uh, entire radiator instead of just fixing it in one point. That way it wouldn't rock back and forth, causing a leak there. So I think that's pretty progressive. Uh, I think I'm gonna set up with this pusher fan. I think the pusher fan is gonna be a good, good way to keep me as much space as possible back here. A nice open area for activities and uh, bunk beds and whatnot. Before I get too far into it, I did have to trim a little bit off of this here. You can see that that's pretty close. It's because I had to trim it all back and I went ahead and got the blend wheel after it and kind of made it nice and smooth and stuff. So that way it wasn't a sharp edge rubbing on anything. And it's not contacting me there, anywhere there. But I did have to take this uh, old hood catch and cut it off this bracket. Uh, as you can see, I've had it off this one for a while. There's actually nothing here to hood catch. I just have this hood release here, just in case the pins fail. Uh, so I'm still happy with that. I want to make sure the alignment's still good, but it should be just fine. So what I'm going to do now is uh, a little bit more troubleshooting. Uh, I'm going to work on the fans a little bit, trying to figure out what I want to do about that. As far as hooking that into the uh, OG fan switch, and go ahead and put my mounts in here. Now, I was laughing because this uh, this power steering fluid cooler is actually holding that pinned up against there when I bolted that back down. So it's not going anywhere, but you don't want to just leave it there. So I'm going to get this thing squared up and then actually mount it to the radiator there. I think it's looking pretty good though. I went ahead and test fit the bumper on here and this was hitting quite a bit of the crash bar. So I had to go old El Chapo on the old crash bar and do a little clearancing here. Just got the uh, cutoff wheel and open that up. I'll paint that up after I get done with this, but now it fits. Everything looks like it'll bolt up just fine. On that note, I'm gonna call it for this evening because it's getting late and uh, I'm pooped. I've been working on this and the Fiesta and it's been kind of a crazy day. So anyway, all right, that's draining down. So I went ahead and filled up the funnel here. I've got the uh, hose clamps up here. Just topping this off before I get started. That's drained back down. So I'll go ahead and put some more fluid in that. Uh, I'm gonna get that filled up and then I'll back it up, let it warm up, and start the heat cycle. So I do have a tiny leak. So I was filling that up, and you can see there's a nipple right there that I put on, and that's actually where the reservoir, or the overflow reservoir is supposed to hook up to, but since I have one built in line, I went ahead and plugged that up, and plus I couldn't really get a line in there. But when I was moving it back, I accidentally knocked a little bit of a hole in it, and I wasn't sure it was gonna leak, and so I'm gonna pull this back and put a new nipple on there all whilst trying to not get all the fluid to, you know, dump out on me. All right, so that didn't turn out to be the nightmare I thought it would be. I've got to plug back up. Kind of concerned that it might rub there. I don't know, I think it's going to be tight enough when I get everything bolted back up that it shouldn't rub. But uh, I've got filled, I filled that up with coolant. I am going to go ahead and start it up and back it off these ramps so it gets nice and level. That way I can go ahead and top the coolant off, let it burp, let it bleed. And also I need to figure out the uh, polarities of this uh, fan switch here. So I know how to hook in my uh, external fans, my new fans. External fans, Jesus Christ, it's like a computer nerd. I mean, I, I am a computer nerd, but you guys aren't supposed to know that. It took forever, my fan finally just came on. I actually hooked the laptop up to it. I was gonna get on Honda and cheat it. 
but it had an update, so it took a minute, but it actually just now kicked on. So, I want to uh, take this off and try the uh, crew band. Alrighty, just shut the engine off. I uh, just put these little spade connectors in there, give me a little bit of a test to see what side of the fan I need to go which. And it's not going to be a great pusher fan, but it'll it'll work for what I'm doing. Oops. Just leaned on that and made a leak a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and cap this off, pull it off, let the, what falls out of there falls out of there. Everything's looking good. It took a long time to reach temperature, so that's, I mean, it's doing its job. It's, it's a cold, chilly night tonight, but there's no airflow and it's still being plenty cold. So that's a good sign. So. I'm going to go ahead and plug this up, put the radiator cap on it, and uh, let me talk to you about the reservoir. I just have it sitting here out of the way for right now. It's, of course, a temporary solution. I saw on the side if I want to put it back over there or down there toward like the frame rail kind of area. I was just about to brag on this and then it fell over. It's completely my fault. But I was going to say, if you don't have one of these little uh, basins, these things are awesome. It just plugs right up, comes with all the different fittings for all the different cars, and it works real easy. I recommend picking up one. I think it's like 15 bucks, something like that. Maybe cheaper. Alrighty, all wired up. Not my best job in the world, but you can see kind of how I did the stacks there and how I had to kind of space that off a little bit. And I did mention I had to clearance a little bit of the rear bumper where the crash bar is, so that'll be in effect. I'm gonna reroute these uh, fog light wires, but guys, it's done. I, I'm happy with it. Uh, I gotta do some shakedown stuff, make sure there's no lingering issues that pop up along the way, but I think we're good to go, guys. But as for tonight, I'm gonna get in the hot tub with the wife because I am tired. Your boy's been doing housework all day. I uh, finished the backsplash with me and the, the wife. We finished the backsplash. It's a team effort, not just me. We, She's been doing the grouting. I've been doing all the backsplash, doing the wet saw stuff. It's kinda cool. I'm, the kitchen's coming along nicely. I know it's not part of my normal channel stuff, but it kind of brings me to a point that I've been kind of thinking about doing a dash two, like a daily dash thing. It's been on my mind for a while. I don't know. Let me know if you guys are interested in that. If not, no big deal. Anyway, I'm going to call this done for tonight. Uh, I'm happy with it. It's looking great. You can see how much tuck that is. You can see all my, all the room for activities. So I'll catch you guys later. I got to go. I got a hot tub call on my name.